Hello students, in this video we'll discuss a first order ODE which models an idealized version of the escape from Earth problem. So suppose we're given the following situation. We have Earth over here, that's Earth. And then this is going to be the radius of Earth. The radius of Earth, R is the radius of Earth, that's a constant. We know that on the Earth's surface, the force of gravity is negative G. Negative G is the force of gravity. That's a good factor. On the surface. Okay. And then we have a uh, rocket ship. So a ship is going to take off from a certain point on the surface of Earth. And then it's going to go like this. And we're going to let r, little r, is the distance from the center of Earth. Okay. So that's our function r. And we want to ask the question, so here's our question, so question, at what initial velocity, at what initial velocity, Does a projectile or a rocket need to escape Earth? Okay. Again, this is an idealized problem. This is not assuming air resistance. This is not assuming other planet and. Uh, other planetary bodies having gravitational attraction. It's just a simple problem where we think of Earth as the only object and there's no resistance. I'm just going to shoot something off initially and let it go and see how fast it has to go initially in order to escape Earth. So it's an idealized problem. All right, so here's the setup of the problem. So we know that Newton's law of gravitation says the following. So Newton's law of gravitation states that the acceleration, A of t, is proportional to the square of the reciprocal of the radius. So that's going to be negative constant. That's a constant proportionality over r squared, where this is our r. That's our distance from the center of the body, right? OK, now we know that when I plug in t equals 0, so I know that it's going to start on the surface of the Earth. So I know that a of 0 is negative g over here. And so that tells me what? So I plug in negative g over here. What do we conclude? We could have that negative g is equal to negative k over r capital squared, the radius of Earth squared. So that allows me to solve for k. So that says that k is equal to g r squared. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say that my acceleration, a of t, a of t, is going to be negative g r squared over uh, little r squared. And that's my function of t. So little g and big r are constants in this problem. Now, here's where we're going to use the chain rule. So by the chain rule, we know that a of t is going to be the derivative of the velocity. It's dv dt, where v is the velocity of the particle, or the rocket in this case. And by the chain rule, this is really dv dr, and then dr dt. And then dv dr is just going to be the derivative of the velocity with respect to the radial variable r. And dr dt is exactly just equal to v, the derivative of r with respect to v r with respect to c is v, so it's going to be v times dv dr, okay? So our differential equation is now the following. I can plug that into this equation, and we get the differential equation that v times dv dr is equal to negative g r squared over little r squared. This is a separable differential equation, so I can separate the variables and get that v dv is negative g r squared over r squared, dr, integrate both sides of the equation, like so. And we can conclude from this that v squared over 2, that's a good sign. I like to see v squared over 2 in most of my problems. That represents sort of a kinetic energy, right? Is equal to what? Is equal to an antiderivative of negative r, negative dr over r squared. It's just going to be 1 over r. So this is going to be g r squared. Those are constants over little r. And to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to multiply by 2. I, of course, get a plus c over here. So now multiply by 2, and our conclusion is that v squared is equal to, I'm going to have a what? I'll have a 2 g r squared over r 
plus a constant. See, that constant doesn't change, you multiply by two. Now, when we plug in time equals zero, what do we know? When we plug in time equals zero, I know that my velocity is V zero, the initial velocity, and I know that little r is equal to r capital. So if I plug in time zero to this equation, I get that V zero squared, the initial velocity, that's just initial velocity, my initial velocity, is gonna be two G R squared over R capital plus C, one of those R's cancels out, and therefore we get that C is going to be V zero squared, and then uh, minus two G R capital. So if I fill that into my differential, my solution to my differential equation, what do we conclude? We conclude from this that the velocity squared, velocity squared, is equal to what? It's equal to two G R squared over R, and then plus this constant C, which is V zero squared minus two G R. That's my constant. And so now from this we see that this expression over here, this two G R capital squared over little r, that can be made as small as we wish. As r gets very, as little r gets very, 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 very large, this quantity over here gets extremely small. So when will we, when will my projectile or my rocket start to fall? My rocket will start to fall as soon as the velocity goes from positive to negative, so it has to hit zero. This can be made as small as we wish, can be made small, right, by making r extremely large. So the condition to escape is that this quantity over here has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I need v0 squared to be bigger than or equal to 2gr, and therefore v0 has to be bigger than or equal to the square root of 2gr. And so this quantity over here is referred to as the escape velocity. This is the escape velocity. Part of it. Okay, so we know for on Earth, for example, that the radius of the Earth is approximately like four, around like 4,000 miles. Um, that's assuming that you believe the Earth is actually a sphere or a sphere it is not a plane, right? But so under the assumption that the Earth is a sphere, um, we know that the radius of the Earth is approximately around like 4,000 miles, right? The gravity, the gravitational constant, can be computed explicitly, it's around 0 .006 miles per second squared. So it turns out over here that for Earth, the escape initial velocity, so no matter how fast you have to fire something initially and just let it go in order to escape the orbit of Earth, is around seven, approximately seven miles per second. You can get a more accurate approximation of this if you add in wind resistance, if you put in the actual numbers, but that's the approximate scale about how fast something has to be shot initially in order for it to escape Earth's velocity, assuming that it doesn't continue to accelerate and there's no, no, no more further velocity down the line. So again, a simple idealized version of the escape from Earth problem, but it reduces to a first order differential equation, which is separable, which is why that we see the true power of separable differential equations in this very idealized model of escape from Earth problem. Thank you very much.